The Horror Stories of Pregnant Women in Slavery We are going to uncover the shocking history of the inhumane treatment of enslaved women during pregnancy and childbirth. Could you even imagine a young woman, no more than 15 years old, enslaved on a plantation in the Deep South? She's pregnant with her first child, a child that she knows will not be her own. Today we delve into the horror stories of pregnant women in slavery in the Deep South. These are stories that have often been tucked away, but it's essential to shine a light on the voices that have been silenced for too long. When we learn about slavery in school, we're taught about the brutality of the system, but we're rarely taught about the specific horrors that pregnant women also faced. She's scared, but she's also filled with hope that maybe, just maybe, her child will have a better life than she has. As her belly grows, so do her fears. She watches as other pregnant women on the plantation are worked to the brink of exhaustion, forced to carry out the same grueling work as the other enslaved people. However, this young woman knows that if she can't keep up with the demands of her masters, her punishment will be severe. As her due date approaches, fear turns into terror. Childbirth is dangerous for any woman, but for an enslaved woman, it's even more so. There are no doctors to help her, no midwives to guide her, all she has are the other enslaved women on the plantation who will do their best to help her through the ordeal. Did you believe this was the entirety of the story? Far from it. The hardships, both mental and physical, endured by those enslaved women are difficult to comprehend. However, we'll attempt to provide insight into their experiences in the following moments. Let's begin. But the horrors don't end with childbirth. If she survives, she'll be expected to return to work in a matter of days caring for her newborn while toiling in the fields with no time to rest or heal. And if her child is taken away from her, as was often the case, she'll have to suffer the heartbreak of knowing that she may never see her baby again. This was the reality that enslaved women faced during pregnancy and childbirth, a reality often hidden from history. The idea of breeding enslaved people like cattle was not new. It was a deliberate and systematic practice aimed at increasing the number of slaves and consequently the wealth of slave owners. Let's take a step back in time to the early 1600s when the transatlantic slave trade began. The first enslaved Africans were brought to Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. At this time, slavery was not yet based on race, but on the fact that one was taken captive and sold into slavery. However, this would soon change as slavery became more profitable. Laws were put in place to ensure that enslaved Africans remained enslaved for life and could be passed down from generation to generation. Enslaved people were considered property and treated as such. They were bought and sold at will and had no rights. By the 1800s, slave breeding became a profitable business and breeding farms and houses were established across the country to facilitate the practice. One such breeding farm was owned by a despicable man named Thomas Jefferson. Yes the same Thomas Jefferson who wrote that all men are created equal. While he owned over 600 slaves, many of whom he bred like animals, Jefferson saw nothing wrong with using enslaved women as breeding machines. Sadly, it wasn't just Jefferson. This practice was widespread among many other slave owners who saw their female slaves as nothing more than property to be used and abused at their whim. Now let's delve into the personal experiences of one such woman. Harriet Jacobs. Born into slavery in North Carolina, Jacobs lived a life that serves as a harrowing testament to the horrific treatment of pregnant, enslaved women. She fell victim to the relentless sexual advances of her master, Dr. James Norcombe, and bore children from a consensual relationship with a white neighbor. This wasn't a romance, but a desperate strategy to protect herself from Norcombe's abuse. Jacobs knew that her children, though fathered by a free man, were born into slavery because of their mother's status. Norcom's threat to sell her children and turn them into plantation workers amplified her terror of motherhood under slavery. After giving birth, Jacobs made the painful decision to escape, leaving her children behind with the hope of protecting them. She endured seven years in hiding before eventually securing freedom in the North. Her narrative, detailed in her book, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, provides a chilling insight into the atrocities pregnant enslaved women had to endure. Her tale serves as a reminder of the systemic abuse and the determination of countless women who sought to protect their children and secure freedom, even in the face of the most inhumane treatment. Now let's shed light on the deplorable conditions on breeding farms, the cruel endangering birthing practices, and the heart-wrenching separation of mothers from their children. 
Breeding farms and houses were established across the South to facilitate the systematic breeding of enslaved women. These women were treated as mere commodities, reduced to their reproductive capabilities. They were forced to live in small cramped quarters with little to no ventilation, given barely enough food to survive, and denied access to proper medical care. Pregnant women on these farms were subjected to backbreaking labor in the fields up until the day they gave birth. Childbirth for enslaved women was a terrifying ordeal. They were often denied medical assistance or pain relief during labor. Barbaric birthing practices, such as the breaking of the pelvis, were inflicted on them without their consent or understanding. The breaking of the pelvis involved the use of a large instrument known as a pelvimeter to forcibly widen the birth canal. This agonizing procedure caused permanent damage to the woman's body and left her with long-term physical disabilities. Another method used to restrain and subdue enslaved women during childbirth was the birthing chair. This chair had straps or ropes to hold the women's legs apart and a hole in the seat to allow the baby to be delivered directly onto the ground. It made it easier for the slave owner or midwife to catch the baby, but it made it more difficult for the woman to move or control her body during labor. To make matters worse, pregnant enslaved women were often subjected to medical experiments and surgeries without their consent or anesthesia. Dr. James Marion Sims, often hailed as the father of modern gynecology, conducted dreadful experiments on enslaved black women. He believed that black women did not experience pain in the same way as white women, and therefore saw no need to provide anesthesia during his surgeries. Sims experimented on enslaved women to perfect surgical techniques for treating conditions like vesicovaginal fistulas, a complication of childbirth causing incontinence. He performed numerous surgeries on enslaved women, often using improvised tools causing immense pain, trauma, and suffering. Perhaps one of the most heart-wrenching aspects of this dark chapter in history was the separation of enslaved mothers from their children. Enslaved children were not considered their mother's own, but rather the property of their white masters. As soon as the children were weaned, which could be as early as six weeks old, they were taken away from their mothers and sold off to other slave owners. The conditions under which these children were raised were beyond horrific. They were denied love, care, and hope. Forced to work from a very young age, these innocent souls faced a life of backbreaking labor with no rights, no freedoms, and no hope for a better life. Born into slavery, their fate was sealed from the moment they took their first breath. The legacy of slavery still lingers in today's society, shaping the experiences of black women and perpetuating racial inequality. The trauma inflicted upon enslaved pregnant women during that dark period has reverberated throughout generations. The emotional and physiological scars left by the separation of mothers from their children have had lasting effects on families and communities. It is crucial to recognize that systematic oppression and dehumanization faced by enslaved women did not vanish with the abolition of slavery. Even after emancipation, black women continue to face discrimination and limited access to health care and reproductive rights. The legacy of racism and inequality still impacts black women's lives today, leading to disparities in maternal health care, higher rates of maternal mortality, and other health disparities that persist. To create a better future, we must actively work toward dismantling the systemic racism and inequality that still exist in our society. We must advocate for equitable access to health care, education, and reproductive rights for all individuals, regardless of their race or background. By addressing the root causes of these disparities, we can strive to create a more just and inclusive society for everyone. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and we hope it inspires you to take action and be part of creating a better world for everyone. If you find this video informative, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such eye-opening stories. Remember, it is in acknowledging the pain and suffering of the past that we pave the way for a future of true equality and justice.